What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, and welcome to episode 15 of our 30-part series on every single G-Max Pokemon. In this series, my guests and I go in-depth on every Gigantamax Pokemon out there. We'll be covering their stats, move pool, potential teammates, impact on the Sword and Shield competitive meta, and in the end, give it a ranking. Once the series is over, I'll make a video covering the top 10 G-Max Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Now, last time, like two months ago for some reason, we covered G-Max Sandaconda with Seabat, so if you missed that, make sure to go and check it out. This time around, we are covering G-Max Grimmsnarl, but as always, we are not alone. Today, we are joined by my vote for the smoothest voice in all of Draft League and the coach of the Las Vegas Cinderaces, JB Westside. How's it going, man? That is the best compliment I've ever gotten. How's it going, guys? My name's JB, and I'm here to talk about some Grimmsnarl. You guys can hear the voice, right? I'm not wrong. Dude, a lot of people say that about you, so coming from you, that's a big compliment. Hey, I, we all got like weird shit with our own voices, and we all think it's terrible, but it is what it is. We move on, right? Anyways, all of JB's links will be down in the description, so make sure to go and check them out. Would highly, highly recommend it. And as always, if you guys are excited for the video, do me a favor and smash the like button. Comment your thoughts on GMAX Grimstone, and subscribe to the channel for more competitive Pokemon content. But as always, we get started like this. JB, what is your favorite thing about GMAX Grimstone? Definitely that it's just a great you know, gloom onto a team. It can really uh, just be able to fit on any team any week and just put in a lot of work, whether that be a more offensive breaker, can be a solid defensive pivot as well. It can really fill a lot of roles and just a great gloom onto any team. Definitely agree. It's really easy to slap on to any team, partly because of its ability. Prankster is a hell of an ability, and yes, it's not really usable when you're Gigantamaxed, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be not Gigantamaxed more often than you are Gigantamaxed, so I think it's fair. You get access to Prankster Screens, Prankster Thunder Wave, Prankster Trick, whatever the case may be, it's it's really, really useful to get that one turn where you're, not the one turn, but the turns where you move first. It's very valuable, especially on a mob only base 60 speed. Mm -hmm. Not to mention Taunt as well to uh, prevent opposing setup, or even like if you have an opponent chip down, you can uh, prevent them from healing up like a Chansey or something along those lines. Also, if you're playing in a league that forces you to hold a Pokeball, being able to trick away that Pokeball and cripple uh, a Pokemon on your opponent's team, uh, can't really overstate that either. Definitely a huge advantage when doing that. I find that's extremely valuable. And we are going to talk about items a bit later, but there's one thing that I do want to mention because it is kind of around items. I don't know how often you've done this because you do you have used GMAX Grimmsnarl, how good is Frisk on this Pokemon? If you don't need, like if you're not running Prankster, if you're running like four attacks, it's very usable. But a lot of times I've been running, you know, bulk up three attacks. I like to be able to get those uh, Prankster bulk ups off and, you know, just get that nice little boost. But if you're, you know, if you don't need bulk up for whatever reason, Frisk is obviously a great go-to. If you're running an Assault Vest set even, uh, obviously Frisk would be a much better option there. That definitely makes sense, especially considering its stats. You really want to make sure that you can become even more of an insane wall breaker, be able to be a tank as well, because you only have a bit of a lackluster-ish defensive stat. So it, it makes sense to run that as your ability of choice with the fact that you want to run bulk up and get that defense boost before you're taking a hit. As far as move pool, I think its move pool is pretty good, wouldn't you say? Dark, fairy, fighting, elemental punches, it's, it's not bad, right? Definitely. A lot of usable stuff. Not great outside of the things you mentioned, but really it doesn't need much else. It really gets a lot of what you'd like to, you know, see in a Pokemon like that. I kind of feel like it's missing a couple moves. If it got like Earthquake, that'd be absolutely incredible. I just it would be to help deal with those poison types that are a bit of a wall to to Grimmsnarl. The other thing is it doesn't get knockoff. What the hell? Why would it not get knockoff? I, I hate that. Yeah, and, and like it's all of its attack motions, like its hands reaching out too. It, like it's just, you know, it, it feels like one of those things that Game Freak just trolled us with. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. You got Darkest Slayer, which is good enough. Sucker Punch in your max form is still insanely powerful. G Max News. I think it's a decent max move like it's not great but it kind of gets the job done when it works do you want to talk about G Max news yeah it really it's a big emphasis on if it works if you get that 50 percent chance it's really nice i've been able to specifically live three hits from a, a specific uh, certain pokemon and if i you know get the sleep chance i can go you know, stay on that extra turn but if i don't get the sleep chance i kind of am either forced out or i just have to let my grimstone all die so it's a little bit of a you know double-edged sword like it's great when it works so i mean that's kind of what you expect with it you know, an ability that's literally 50-50. It's unfortunate, but at the end of the day, when it works, it works well. And you kind of have to go with that, and you, can, you can't really build your team around it. It's not necessarily something that you can just bank on every time, and that sucks because at the end of the day, it just becomes like a plain old dark move that doesn't lower your opponent's special defense like the regular Max Darkness would. So it is what it is, and I guess there's nothing more to it than that in terms of G-Max news. But uh, in terms of items, I mean, you mentioned a couple items you liked before. You mentioned the Assault Vest. Is there anything else that you feel is super valuable on G-Max Grimmsnarl? 
Uh, if you're, you can never overstate the power of resist berries with Kevia and Babiri for this thing. I found myself running Babiri a lot because uh, in the season I am using it in IBL, I've ran into pretty much every good physical attacking skill type. So Grimstar, while it does have good bulk, especially when G-Max, it's 2 ko would by a lot of like banded iron heads or like uh, banded sizzler specifically can 2 ko if you're not running Babiri Berry. So resist berries are great. And then I obviously already mentioned Assault Vest is, you know, a great item on any Pokemon. I feel like there's a couple we have to mention. I get that Light Clay is really good on a regular Grimstarl, but if you can run items, I think a Light Clay could be pretty valuable. It allows you to kind of mimic that maxing of your HP stats because you're cutting the physical attacks in half, the special attacks in half with light screen or reflect, so that's kind of useful. If you manage to get up your screens and you're not running light clay, then a weakness policy is also very solid. You're taking those hits from the fairy types, from the steel types, from the poison types, and you're able to fire off hits that are extremely powerful. Max snoozes, max star falls, whatever the case may be, max knuckles to boost up your attack. I think it's very, very valuable with the weakness policy because it is bulky enough, especially behind screens. Definitely agree. It's just, you know, a lot of times with your GMAX, you like it to be more offensive, but if you can definitely get dual screens to work in a matchup, go for it. Now let's talk about Pokemon that pair really well with Grimmsnarl. Obviously you can't do everything on its own. It's one of the best GMAXs out there, but it definitely needs help. What are some Pokemon that you look at when pairing with GMAX Grimmsnarl to make it the best GMAX Grimmsnarl it could possibly be? Anything that breaks stills and opposing fairies. So I have Arcanine and Corviknight with it, so they do a pretty good job of that. Something like a Skullipede as well, which are all my team's team that I have Grimmsnarl with. So. Anything that breaks those, uh, good fighting types, just good wall breakers that can deal with your uh, bulkier fairies and your bulkier steel types. You know, as always, I'm kind of looking at the more defensive end. Um, my thought process is Grimmsnarl is a fairy type, but you can't really have it be that traditional defensive fairy you want it to be because it doesn't resist fighting and it doesn't resist bug, which are two common-ish typings. Fighting for sure, bug not so much. But at the end of the day, you really need ways to take those hits. So something like an Aegislash, which is immune to fighting moves, is absolutely incredible. It can also punish the fighting types with King Shield or any of its offensive sets, whether it's Specs or Weakness Policy or Band or Life Orb or whatever. It's really effective at getting rid of those things. And then just like Aegislash, you have Jirachi, which resists Grimstone's weaknesses and provides you with Stealth Rocks, U-Turn, Wish Supports, Setup Options as well. It really allows Grimstone to just not be that defensive fairy and really take advantage of the types that would not be or would normally be damaging it. Looking at this, is there anything else that you wanted to, to mention about G-Max Grimmsnarl before we get into the ranking? Uh, I don't think I have anything. Look, I think Grimmsnarl is one of probably the 10 best G-Max Pokemon in the game. It definitely has some flaws like no flying move, no knockoff, and most G-Max leagues you gotta hold a Pokeball. I think that really weakens what Grimmsnarl can do. So I'm not gonna give you my ranking yet because it's maybe a bit of a fake out, but what do you have? If you could rank it 1 to 10, 10 being the best, what is your ranking? I'd give it between a 7.5 and, and an 8.5. It's definitely very viable if you're able to draft well around it uh, it does have some very obvious flaws like we've mentioned but it is also a fantastic wall breaker it can be a great pivot as well if you're able to you know use screens use taunt use prankster effectively in general it can definitely be just a great all-around pokemon so very solid seven and a half to eight and a half range you know i i love one of my like ranking falls right in between someone's range it works out so well with all those flaws that i mentioned it's still an eight on ten it is so freaking good it just provides so much utility to a team so much value and i get it probably will be a tier one mon meaning it'll cost you a couple points to draft but at the end of the day you're basically getting a tier one mon on top of your gmax which is super valuable and on when you can use a, a league that gives you items on your gmax mons it makes it so much more beneficial so much more valuable i really love grimstone i think it's a fantastic one that everyone should get an opportunity to use give it a chance you will not be disappointed i can promise you jd isn't disappointed right Definitely not. It's been a ton of fun to use. Well, you guys have now heard what we think about GMAX Grimstone, and now I want to hear from you. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this Pokemon and what Pokemon you would want to pair with it to make it the best it could possibly be. We're an awesome community here, and your answer just might help someone in their next draft. If you guys want to learn more about other GMAX Pokemon, feel free to check out the other videos in the series. The playlist is in the description and in the cards. If this is by chance the first video you've seen of mine, consider subscribing, especially if you like competitive Pokemon. Oh, and of course, don't forget to like the video as well. Next episode will be out real soon, and you never know who joining us next thanks for joining me today jb watch let everyone know what you got going on i got my own league starting up the upa pretty soon if you check my twitter i'll have a link to the discord server we're running a pretty cool uh season long competition you might have a small little cash prize involved so go check that out his youtube channel will be down in the description as well as the twitter again thanks to jb and thanks to all of you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys all next time